I am deeply honored to be here with you today at your commencement. And it wasn't very long ago, I was actually one of the many of you out here. To be candid, I can't even remember who spoke at my commencement, so um, I won't be offended if you don't remember a single word that I say. Well, today, I want to tell you about three, the three kinds of people that you'll meet in your life. Now, no more, no less, just the three kinds of people that you'll meet. The first you've already met, and they're here with you in, in person or in spirit, and that is your family. And your family is the reason why all of you are here. My parents are the single most important people to me in my life. My father is a well-educated, stern, quiet man who came from very humble beginnings. He started work when he was only a child. To make ends meet for his family, he started school late, but still managed to get a scholarship to go to university where he worked part-time to get by. My mother also came from very humble beginnings. She was the daughter of a school watchman. She and her family lived on the school premises, and she never made it to university. And while my parents had so little to go through life for themselves, they wanted only the best for their children, but expected nothing except for us to do well. I wish I could say I was a model student back when I was in school, but I wasn't. Clearly, you know, I was playing games and doing everything that uh, wasn't necessarily in line with what the school wanted me to do. In addition, I was always getting in trouble back in school. I was cutting classes, doing well in the subjects I was interested in, but pretty much getting Fs in everything else. My parents would keep getting called into school, and I caused them a lot of grief, especially my mother. And till this day, I regret every single time I let her down. But even while my parents were stern with us, they always told us that we could do anything after we graduated from university. Their rationale was that on a worst case scenario, they had given me an education that I would not go hungry. And I suppose it was because they had so little in their lives that they wanted to make sure that we would not end up wanting. From my father, I learned the, import uh, the importance of hard work, attention to detail, and responsibility. From my mother, I learned that you needed to just go get what you wanted out of life. Against all odds, I graduated from law school. I found a job at a law firm. But at the back of my mind, my mother's voice would always be there, saying, you can do whatever you want, just go do it. So I'm often asked how my parents reacted. You know, when they found out I had quit um, being a lawyer and founded a startup? Well, truth be told, <clears throat> I never really told them. I just conveniently forgot to tell them that when I quit being a lawyer and founded Razor with just about $4,000 in savings. And slowly but surely, at some point, it probably dawned on my parents that I had quit from the law firm. It was probably the uh, black t-shirt and jeans that I was wearing to work that kind of tipped them off. But they never said a thing about it, except my mother, who would occasionally ask if I was taking care of my health. And the thing I've learned about family is that what they say to you is what they think is the best for you. But what is unsaid is that no matter what you do, whether you take their advice or otherwise, your family will ultimately support you with any decision that you make. So I hope that you will learn from your, uh, that your family are the people in your life that you will take the most from and owe the most to. Likewise, my family, my parents, are whom I've taken the most from and owe everything to. So together with you today, whether in person or in spirit, are your family. Always appreciate that every single minute, every single day. And that is the first group of people that you have met. Now, the second group of people are those that you will meet in the course of your work. I was fortunate, like all of you here today, that I was given a good education. And while I enjoyed being a lawyer, I found I was really passionate about something that had absolutely nothing to do with anything I had learned in school, but was in fact everything that school had been teaching me was a complete waste of time, and that was gaming. Today is day one for the rest of your life. You have got to discover for yourself what you love to do, and it's not necessarily 
what you may have spent your entire life studying or working toward. Your work is going to be a very big part of your life. And as such, it is incredibly important that you commit yourself to doing great work. If you're lucky, like me, you'll find your path early on. But if you don't truly love the work that you do, move on and don't stop looking for until you find what you're truly passionate about. I founded Razor in 2005. 12 years later, we went public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Today, we're the leading global lifestyle brand for gamers, by gamers. But all of this wasn't just my work. I had some part in it, yes. But the work to get us to this point was really, really the team. It was really the people I had met in the course of my work. And the people that you will meet in work will dictate if you will be successful in life. I can't emphasize how important this is, especially for your first job, that it isn't the salary that you're going to get or the title that you will have, but it's the people that you work with, work for, and the culture that you'll be working in. If you hang out with negative, toxic people at work who aren't committed to doing well, you're destined for failure. Conversely, if you're lucky enough to meet smart, driven people who want to do well for themselves, for the people they work with, and for the organizations that they work for, you're more likely to succeed in life. I was lucky to have met some of the most driven and smartest people in the course of my life, many of whom have become close friends, colleagues, and mentors. One of my seed investors, his name is Carl Ng, has been instrumental in my life. I met him randomly through the introduction of a friend who said, I remember, he's just as crazy as you. I'm sure you guys will get along well. And since then, we've been friends for over a decade, and he's still one of the most annoying people I know. Why? Because he's always messaging me, saying I'm a loser, and I should be doing so much more. And that's really annoying. But I've realized, more often than not, that he's right. I'm not pushing myself hard enough. And it's important for us to, to find annoying friends who keep pushing us forward. Another person I credit the success of Razor to is a gentleman called Kor King Ju. He is our chief operating officer. Now, Kor, as we call him, is more than just the COO of Razor to me. He's a mentor, he's a friend, and I've absolutely no doubt that without him, Razor would never have scaled to where we are today. Prior to Razor, he had run global organizations and was the CEO of a public listed company. And while I've learned so much from him, technical skills, management skills, it's the non-business things that I've learned from him that are the most important to me. For example, he has absolutely no personal ego at all. He always puts the interests of the company and the people around him first. There's a little known story that uh, only those in Razor know, and this is probably the first time I'm speaking about it in public. Many years ago, when I first approached him to join Razor, I had approached him to join the company as CEO of Razor, and he could very well been a phenomenal CEO for us, but he preferred to take the COO role it wasn't an issue of money, title, or prestige for him. He just felt he could contribute the most as COO of a tiny company like ours back then. And he's one of the hardest workers at Razor. He doesn't need to be. He's, it's just his work ethic. And to date, he's one of the people that I respect the most in my life. It's truly the people that you meet in the course of your work that can fundamentally change your life. So this is the second group of people that you will meet, the people that you will work with, find work that you're truly, truly passionate about, and surround yourself with like-minded people, people that you want to grow with, learn from, and be successful with. The third and final group of people are those that you will spend your life giving back to. The very fact that you're here today graduating from one of the finest institutions in the world means that many have come around you to make this happen. And whether you know it or not today, you owe a debt to them, and you have a moral and ethical duty to give back. But who would you be giving back to? That is for you to discover. 
It could be your local community. It could be this very school that you're graduating from. It could be, for the Singaporeans here, your country, Singapore. And given that all of us are citizens of the world, it could be this very planet that we live on. And if you're in as fortunate a position to be able to give back, just know that you're giving back, not because you'll be thanked, honored, or, or recognized. In fact, it's more likely that you will not be thanked, honored, or recognized for it, and you will just hear negativity and naysayers. About a year ago, you know, our Singapore Prime Minister, PM Lee, you know, tweeted about creating a cashless economy. I tweeted back, dude, we could totally help with that. Um, I didn't say dude, but you get the idea. And with that, there was a whole lot of negativity and naysayers on the internet. How is a gaming company going to build an e-payment platform? But it didn't matter to us. What mattered was that this was an opportunity for us as Singaporeans to step up and give back, to do something for Singaporeans by Singaporeans. And it didn't matter for us if we succeeded or failed, at least we would have tried for the company, for the country. And fast forward a year today, we now run one of the biggest e-money platforms in the region, we process billions of dollars in digital payments, and we're now trialing our e-payment network in Singapore as we speak. It's not about being popular, it's not about being liked, it's about doing the right thing when you have the opportunity to do so. Every time you want to do something you believe in, don't let the voices of others discourage you. Have the conviction to follow your own path. Life is short, don't let the naysayers distract you, because in a bigger scheme of things, they don't matter at all in the work that you will do. And it doesn't matter if you succeed or if you fail. What is important is that you try to make a difference for the people that you seek to give back to. And some of that effort will make a difference to them, however large or small. So step up, give back, and make a difference to the people around you, to your country, to the world. Not for what others think, but for your responsibility to do so. In closing, when I was a kid, my mother would drop me off at the local bookstore, and I would sit there reading all day with my brother for hours and hours. And one of the series of books I really enjoyed reading was the Choose Your Own Adventure series. I'm sure many of you guys have actually gone through that too. And at every few pages of the book, I would be presented with a dilemma, a choice, and, and the result of each choice was always gloriously random, no matter how much thought I would have put into it. And that is how I've always seen life, that life is just a game, a series of random choices that I've made for the ongoing adventure ahead of me. And today, as you graduate to begin day one, I wish for you a life that is just a game with many random choices for the adventure that is ahead of you. Thank you all very much.